How's it going guys? Lou here again for Techno Loco and today is Friday and we're gonna be starting off a new thing I'm calling Friday Features and uh, Friday Features is basically just gonna be a couple of apps, movies, whatever that I find interesting and I want to share to you guys and today's first Friday feature is gonna be about Snapseeds. I was talking earlier this week about improving their photography. The other half of posting a good photo is editing it or processing it correctly so that it shines its most beautiful shine now there's also some debate to be held about you know taking purely just taking the photos and then posting them and having the photo stand on its own merit or uh, is editing or processing the image okay now I mean uh, my stand on that is basically that if it the final product doesn't leave the realm of possibility or what the camera could capture then that's fine so i'm going to be showing you a couple things about snapseed and how to use it let me just go ahead and start up the snapseed app on my phone so i'm using the i wish i could say it was a galaxy s7 <laughs> um so i'm going to be using my trusty one plus one here so let's go ahead and pick a photo that's kind of difficult um to love so let's go ahead and pick something with high contrast so we've gone ahead and picked this image I took like last month I guess if you notice the on the image the clouds are kind of okay but everything else is kind of shadowy or we're gonna touch that up a little bit or process that so that everything's a bit more clear um, a snap season interface is actually very simple on the top left there you have basically an open button and on the top right are your states uh, or your history there's also the save button there as well as the menu dots bottom left you have a histogram basically showing the values of the image and on the bottom right is your edit uh, button so go ahead and hit that edit button this is the screen that kind of gets most people and it's kind of daunting because you have all these different options and uh, you don't really know which one to use you know let me just go ahead and go go over these couple of things uh, so to an image uh, is basically just your basic uh, editing tools for your photos so brightness contrast color balance temperature all these kinds of things details is basically sharpening this is especially useful for smartphone cameras that have a tendency to be soft um, though if the camera itself can't capture any details then there's really nothing that Snapseed can edit. Crop is basically just adjusting the, the cropping of the image. Rotate does similar, um, lets you rotate the image. Perspective also allows you to adjust just what it says, the perspective. White balance is a new thing that they introduced and it's actually pretty powerful, I've found it. So the brush tool is basically like a localized application of brightness, of contrast, dodge burn, so that you can highlight individual portions of the image if you so wish. Selective is also kind of the same thing, but it affects an entire area, so you don't have to use the brush it applies a circular area that you can uh, you can edit locally healing basically allows you to remove blemishes and stuff on your face so vignette or vignette or vinaignette <laughs> allows you to create a sort of shadow area around the edge of the image it allows you to highlight what's really in the middle of your shot text is also a new feature that they added so you can overlay text below that you have different filters now it'll be up to you to really experiment with the filters here uh, because it depends on what you want to achieve with your shots the ones i use most are the drama because it really brings out the contrast of the scene and i like a lot of contrast in my images and the face filter is also a new addition and it's actually kind of cool it works kind of like how snapchat's uh filters work it evens out any blemishes the skin tone so let's go ahead and edit this image so let's go and tune that image so how you operate snapseed basically is that there are no buttons on screen everything is just done by gestures um so if you drag up and down it'll go through these different lists of items all these are different things that you can edit using this menu under tune image so let's go ahead and edit the brightness now once you've made a selection as to which item you want to edit all you need to do is just drag left and right so let's adjust this a little bit. Uh, and if you notice, this scene is kind of difficult because the clouds are well exposed or are kind of exposed okay, uh, but the buildings and everything else are kind of dark. So we're gonna have to edit the brightness a little bit so that the buildings come out better exposed. All right, so that's kind of on the edge there. So let's go ahead and pull the clouds back. Now, when, you were, when you're dealing with areas that are kind of brighter in the image, like the cloud area here, what you wanna do to kind of affect just the brighter areas, you wanna go ahead and scroll down to the highlights item, and then you wanna pull that back to the left. So if you notice there, if you pull it to the right, it gets really bright. Um, and if you pull it all the way to the left, it kind of reduces the exposure of that. So if you notice now, 
the clouds are still kind of exposed the same way as it was before but now the buildings are also kind of exposed better if you might be wondering you could also use the top right button here this uh little square thing uh, and you can press that and it'll show you a preview of or it will show you what the image was before the edits you applied so that's the image before and this is the image after okay before after so now that's not nearly done so let's increase the brightness a little bit more here okay that's about right now uh, contrast you can also increase that a little bit not too much though. Now, if you reduce the contrast all the way to the left you get this kind of flat looking image but if you move it all the way to the right the shadowy areas get too shadowy and the, the brighter areas also get really really bright so you don't want to pull it all the way to the right either um, so a nice balance of about maybe 20 ish should do here okay saturation affects just how much value the colors have so there let's pull up the saturation because it's kind of gray it's kind of dull this image let's pull up the saturation a little bit but the ambiance i don't exactly know what it, this does kind of narrows the dynamic range of the image it kind of makes everything a little bit more even so pulls up the darker areas and pulls down the brighter areas so there so not always that great but you have to experiment to see what works now one last thing we can do is the shadows uh, slider will actually let you affect the shadows directly so if you see that you can actually pull this up all the way up and bring all the colors up like that it's kind of it looks kind of 3d kind of HDR looking right now so you don't want to do that because that looks completely unrealistic uh, so let's just pull that back a lot okay bring it up a little bit here all right so again so we're almost done here I think uh, image is kind of bluish kind of cold let's bring up the warmth a little bit here okay this is the current image with all the uh, with all the filters or with all the edits applied uh, and this is the before okay so before after before after before after no hold on before after so let me just edit that a little bit okay that's closer to what I saw in the actual streets okay now again as we talked about before smartphone cameras have limitations when it comes to the dynamic range and this is why editing software like this is necessary okay so when you're done with all the edits you've made you want to go ahead and just hit the check mark button here in the bottom right and that'll save the edits that you made on the image all right so if you notice the if you noticed on its main menu it doesn't actually have that little box on the right for the preview before and after so what you can do is you can just go you can just go ahead and click the image itself it'll show you a before and after shot so that's kind of okay now um, and what I like to do is apply a little bit of filtering uh, the drama filter helps out a lot in these kinds of situations it really brings out the dramatic effect um, and it's kind of kind of very dramatic so I kind of pull it back a little bit and then up the saturation so that so that it's just a little bit more fun now there are a couple of areas here that could actually serve or that could actually be helped a little bit more so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's go and do some selective editing. Now, what you want to, what you're gonna have to do first is select an area that you want to edit locally. So let me do the trees here. You can just go ahead and do the same gestures as you did in the in the tune image uh, menu. Um, just go ahead and hit the brightness, contrast, and saturation here, um, and basically it'll allow you to edit that locally. So let me just go ahead and show you that. That's really bright. That's very dark. Okay, so it's pretty cool and useful for when there are times that there are just parts of the image that the software will fail to edit on its own or will fail to edit automatically on its own so it's nice to have that option at least now if you're also wondering you can do a pinch movement on this uh item because as i mentioned there's a radius around here as to which it's affecting right then to see that radius you kind of just want to go ahead and pinch so that's how far it's affecting. You could have it affect the entire image, though I don't know why you'd, let, you'd want to do that. Uh, but you can affect, have it affect as small an area as this. See? Okay. All right. So let's go ahead, and also you can drag it around. You just have to go ahead and click the icon, and you can drag it around, uh, and it gives you a magnification, so you can zero in on where you want that modification or that edit to take place. All right. There we go. Okay. Jeez, it's warm. That's basically everything I wanted to edit on the uh, image. Now, if I so wanted, I could also apply a text. It could be something super hipster like, go out and travel. 
And then what you could do here is you could do click this little swatch, this palette looking icon. Click that, and it'll give you different options. Uh, so you can go ahead and click. This one is more bold. Uh, this one is very chic, very minimalistic. All right, so let us go and pick some things. The different styles that you could uh, use, and uh, it would be too long if we covered every single one of them. Go ahead and experiment with that yourself. So let's go out. Let's go with this one, the big bold font here. There's a couple of things that you could do here also. You could uh, adjust the opacity. You could invert, which does this. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's do that. And you can adjust the color as well on the little... What's, the, what's that called, guy? Palette? Is it a palette? Yeah, okay. It's a little palette thing. This is the palette. This thing on the right is a swatch, not a palette. I'm an idiot. I'm sorry. You can pick a color here. So just your regular colors and you can't specify your own color though, but there's a wide range of colors to go with here. So, you know, just pick one that suits whatever you're trying to show that day. I'm going to pick white. So does black work? No, white is better. White is cool. All right, there you go. And then hit check. So everything's very simple, very straightforward. Now, say for example, you messed up, you made an edit that you don't want to keep what you do. You can go ahead and click the, if you notice on the top right, the the box earlier that showed zero now shows four and this is the total number of edits that you've made on the image so you can go back in your history and unfuck it up so let's say we don't like the text you can either delete it completely or you can go ahead and edit it there you go easy as pie the last thing i always want to do when i'm editing the image is to adjust the sharpness of the image because you don't know what details can come up out of the woodwork when you're editing the image so that's definitely the last thing you want to do so go ahead and hit details now since this we're already basically done with this and what you want to do is the structure and sharpening are two different things structure basically tells the app what's the threshold for letting know whether a thing is actually an edge or it's a detail so if you bring the structure up super up high here if you notice on the image Everything's just kind of super like It looks super realistic actually, so this is structure at zero Right now, so let's just zoom in here and then this is structure at 100 now if you notice Then all these ugly things these uh, this noise image noise here comes up uh, and you don't want that so you want to reduce the structure down to about maybe 30 40 50 depending on the image that you want to take definitely if there are very minor things or very minuscule details on the image you want that a little bit higher now the sharpening is actually how much sharpening the, the app applies onto the image so let's bring that up a decent amount like maybe 40 okay so let's do before and after so this is after this is before after so if you notice everything's just a little bit more clear um it's it's much more discernible and things just look to have a tendency to look more sharp there you go now the problem is if you over sharpen your image it's going to look unrealistic it's going to look overly edited it's going to look super fake so you don't want to go ahead and do that let's say we're happy with the output here let's just go ahead and hit the check mark to save that and once we're good and done you go ahead and hit save on the top right here this icon up here hit save and just for one last time this is before the editing and this is after the editing okay so that's how powerful uh, phone editors have become over the years and Snapseed is definitely one of my, one of my most favorite editors um, just because it allows you a lot of editing power uh, at the same time remaining really intuitive to use it's really fun also to experiment with it and definitely a combination of all these different filters will definitely give you hours and hours and hours of experimenting to do so I would suggest you go out and go ahead and do that. That's basically Snapseed. And I think the most important part here is that you don't be afraid to use it. Anyway, all the original images are kept safe. It doesn't overwrite those original images. So don't worry about it. Go ahead, go out and edit your images. Experiment with them. Uh, if you have any questions as to how to edit it to look a certain way, you can go ahead and hit me in the comment section down there. Uh, just let me know uh, if you have any questions regarding Snapseed. That's all the time we have for today, and that was our very first 
Friday feature. If there's any other apps that you'd like me to feature, you can go ahead and let me know also in the comment section. So let me know if there's any apps that you found very useful in your day-to-day -day life and uh, something that you'd like people to know about. Um, and we'll feature that app here. We'll also be featuring maybe some games and movies, series, whatever. Um, so it's kind of a random thing on Fridays that I that we're gonna do. But that's it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't seen the previous video, go ahead and click here. Go out and show that your love. If you'd like to see more videos like this, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe buttons uh, down there. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in, for spending this time with me. And you guys stay awesome. I'll see you in the next video.